What's up, everyone? It's Gavin or Tweet. What up? What up? What up? It's Marcus or Pink. It's Charles or Chuck. You got Matt or has, of course. What's happening, everybody? Had a good weekend. Really, it's been a minute since we've had a tournament of this magnitude over at Gommel, which we'll obviously be ca- talking about, which I'm excited for because I only got to watch two of your sets on stream, Gavin. Um, I know it was a busy tournament, but I felt like there was a lack of some tweak on those streams is just how I feel about it. Obviously, you can't get all of them. I was like, what the hell is going on over here? Um, and obviously, you know, they had the, tre- the stream difficulties that one day, but we'll get into all that in a minute. First off, we'll do it around the horn. How's everyone doing? Marcus, how you been? You weren't here last week. What's up? I know, bro. I was, I was really sad. Um, I'm good. I'm I'm in full adult like dad mode though. So I kind of saw I saw like a good bit of Gama, which is like the first tournament that I've probably watched in like since that Japan tournament where like Doromigi did really well. That was probably the last thing I like really watched. So sorry, my cats. Um, so <laughs> it was really it was really nice. It was like kind of refreshing to like actually be invested in a tournament. Especially because it started on Friday and I was at Xanadu and like they were playing it at Xanadu. So I like could see like the crew battle and everything. And then um, I didn't really see anything on Saturday, but I saw a lot of Sunday. So it was super cool. But otherwise, like I haven't been really playing anything. Like I just show up to Xanadu, clock in, clock <laughs> out, like come home, live life. Like I. I love that. But it was cool. It was cool. Watching watching uh Gone was really cool. I still haven't signed up for SmashCon. I don't know if I will sign up for SmashCon. I've been thinking about it. Damn. Um, you gotta at least as a player, you're out. gonna come through though, right? I am guaranteed to go, but I don't okay, know if I'm plan. entering because like I don't know, joints over two thousand entrants and uh it's crazy. I'm like good, but like Ain't that just a waste of money when I could just show up for free? True, <laughs> true, true. <laughs> you've, you've had, bro, you've had some <laughs> deep tournament runs though. This could definitely be one of them. That's that one the Genesis you did great at. Thing. That's the annoying thing. You is could. Like, I know, especially because like I've been doing really well recently in Xanadu. Like I feel like anyone that's not that we've had like insane invaders, but like there's like the dude who's said that they were like the best Steve in Mexico. I played them recently and I won and uh, I played Yosefu like right after they got ninth at CEO and I won pretty convincingly. And like, there's a lot of players that I know who are doing really well and I keep just kind of winning. So it's like that part is like, you know, maybe I could go to SmashCon and like do really well, but then it's like, or I could just save money for my kid. So, you know, it's like one of those things that's, that's kind of hard to think about. So I, it's been something I've been thinking about for a little bit. But um, yeah, that's that's been my life pretty much. Just chilling. Being a dad, being a husband. Hey, oh, let's fun. go. Let's go. <laughs> I'll go nice. next. I, I had a good time this weekend just uh, watching Gamo and then Bam was in SoCal. So we got to hang out a lot. We played a bunch of Smash and Street Fighter 6 offline. And yeah, Gamo was fun to watch and... We've been playing more Unite recently, too, with the homies, so it's been really fun. And, yeah, those are, like, kind of been the, the games and stuff I've been playing. And then Workside, a lot of work on Watch the Throne. Really excited for that event. And Same. Yeah, yeah. What about you, Gavin? Uh, busy. I'm leaving for Mexico. The travel gauntlet. Tomorrow morning. I got home from Gommel yesterday. Um, I think B and I had a solid weekend in Toronto. I, I, I really like uh, Toronto and Vancouver and stuff like that. Um, yeah, it's the traveling is just getting started, too. There's a lot that I'm going to be doing. But this this is back-to-back, which is kind of tough because it's, um, it's not just within the U.S. or anything. But, yeah, it'll be my first time in Mexico. That's cool. It's, it's going to be like – the caliber is like just as big as Gommel from what I'm aware. So it's, it's, um, it's good. Um, I had a physical therapy thing before I went to Gommel and I got like, um, a lot of good news about like, you know, that like I'll be, I'm good to play for the, for Gommel and smash factor and all that stuff. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm pretty good. What about you guys? 
All right, fine. Uh, you know, more or less, <laughs> just the abridged version of what Chuck's been up to. Uh, Hitmasters and Unite. Before Mewtwo got nerfed, just want to put that out there. Didn't play him once. Just smoked him with Glaceon, as I do, of course. Uh, so that was cool. <laughs> Playing Unite has been great. They did like a new PvE mode, which has been fun. I've been grinding that a bit. and So Unite has been great. Um, playing a little Street Fighter, a little Smash, as always. And then I was also doing work with the uh, Watch the Throne crew, which is, dude, it is coming together. I'm really, really... We could talk about that tournament later after we cover all the other ones, but because it's like further down the line, but... I don't know. It's it's nice to be a part of a team that has been in the community for so long and just really wants to make like an unforgettable tournament experience for an invitational. So which, you know, they have the capacity or, you know, potential to be some of the most unforgettable tournaments we've ever seen, obviously, as we've seen with big invitationals in the past. But we'll get to there at some point. We got to talk about Gommel this weekend. And again, I'm excited to hear about your run, Gavin, because I didn't really look at your bracket, honestly. I was just watching the stream all weekend, qu switching between quad and uh, mainstream. So, uh, yeah, why don't you walk us through it? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I, I kind of talked about this a little bit, but I was really nervous because uh, I hadn't competed in a while and I just started dealing with tendonitis. Um, I thought it was cool that I had like the crew battle was on Friday. So I was, it was a good opportunity to like gauge a lot of things. I think, um, they saved, we, we saved me for like the, the, the end. So I was the anchor. So that was scary. So Leo had one stock and then Spargo had three stocks left. And, um, I was like, that's completely doable. I think for me with three stocks of my own to take four. And, uh, I kind of screwed up the whole crew battle because against Leo, I had the wrong controls. <laughs> I don't even know like how many people do or don't know this, but um, yeah, I feel really bad. So Leo kind of like let me take his stock after he took a couple of mine, I think, because he's like, oh snap, like he doesn't even have the right controls. But, and then I it just had one versus Spargo, so I just tried my best. So, but I, at least it was good to like play with some like intensity and like see how I was feeling for the actual bracket. Um, yeah, I tried to play some Pikmin Four when I could, um, and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, I I played. My first match was against. So Gavin, before you get into your bracket, I forgot to show real quick. If you guys enjoy. The Come content. on, Charles. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Let us know what you guys want to see on our Patreon. So after every episode, we, report, we record bonus content on the Patreon. So if you guys have any kind of specific topics or anything like that, make sure to let us know in the comments that you guys want to see. For this week's bonus content, we are actually going to be going over some or kind of like reacting to the results of the video by Easy Freezy, talking about all the rankings of different characters throughout tournaments. I think that's such an interesting topic. So we'll be reacting to the results of all the different rankings of the different characters and talk about some of the best of each, like the best players of each characters and you know how they bring their rankings up and down and all that jazz. So if you guys do want to check that out, check out our Patreon. That's the best way you guys can support us. And of course, tweak onward with your bracket run. Yeah. Um... My first match was against Marth, I'm pretty sure. That's a good matchup, so I just played pretty well. Second match was against like Ness and Ice Climber, so getting into like some weird matchups, I guess. But that went well too. Um third match, so you only I only had to play a couple to get in the best of five. Third match was against Hero, so it went from like Ice Climbers to Hero. So as a Diddy player, I'm like starting to get nervous that like it's one of those tournaments. Yeah. Um, game one was chaotic. I like um, lost that one. And it it kind of got better and better, I think, from there. I think I won the next three. Um, and that was to finish pools. And then my next match, I think, was later in the day. I think I had a couple hours. My next match was against Pelka, I think, who I used Sephiroth for. So that was my first uh match using Sephiroth. Um and that went well. I think it was 3-1. I won a couple games, lost a game, then I won. Um and I I, I felt good like at at for a while because especially cuz my next match I lost to 
to Duck Hunt fan. And it was tough because I haven't, I wasn't really sure if I should risk going Diddy, like even if it's as bad as the as the matchup is, like uh, he is my best character and stuff like that. So it is a tough decision. I like won a game with Sephiroth, lost a couple. Uh, and then I tried like just a desperation, like wolf pick. And it was pretty clear that I wasn't ready. I feel like they played well. I couldn't really get clean hits or anything. Can, um, can I ask what makes that matchup so difficult for Diddy? I have an idea at a high level, but just kind of want to hear your Yeah, the, there's just a lot of, I like to call them roadblocks. Like the easiest example is always Hydrant. So that means it stops Monkey Flip and Banana. Um, so like I don't control the neutral and like I don't get any like super crazy valuable hits usually. And with Duck Hunt, it's a lot, a lot, a lot of that. Um, with the side B and the the gunmen are on screen for so long, the can is all around. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, it's hard. Good to name. Get... Roadblock is a really good. Yeah, that's usually. Like, I need one of those, man. What the heck? Yeah, I want great. a roadblock. What the heck? Um, but that's a very basic breakdown of it because I also, as much as as it sounds bad, it, it probably is. I honestly haven't played it too much. Especially because you usually, <laughs> I usually want to avoid it, um, and that's the tough thing. I think with Sephiroth, like he can help with against zoners, but he doesn't just super clear them. I feel like I still need to know all the matchups. Like for example, my previous match was Snake, and that one is like a, a one I could break down, not only as Sephiroth but with Diddy too if I need to to go Diddy, which is cool. And you've always been really good against Snake, even like with your Wario and stuff like that. I'm glad you think that, because sometimes I'm not sure. I feel like I've gone back and forth on it. But um But yeah, I uh So it's 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 tough being put in a situation where it feels like I should go Sephiroth, but I still don't really have a good breakdown of it with either character. I like having at least a a game plan, even if I do have to go diddy or sephiroth and i don't like it so that was tough but i think they played really well i'm gonna have to like just be more ready for that kind of matchup next time a uh, um, quick question is that your uh is that the best duck hunt player you've placed or faced in tournament um i would think so i, I haven't played too many i can only think of maybe like two including that one so Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I mean, obviously, Duck Hunt is not a really popular character, and if you guys are regular viewers of the show, then you'll know that you know Tweak says that Diddy Kong's worst matchup is Duck Hunt, or at least one of the top three, or it's like a tough one, right? So, you know, even though the character is a little rare, and I mean, we've even heard Tweak say this, like, oh, you, you know, it's a rare character, but you'll be surprised you know, how often some of these rare characters show up in tournament. I think this is one yeah. of the instances. So it's really interesting to hear how you handled the situation because it's very rare. You don't, you're not going to have a lot of experience. So just hearing your thought process was really, yeah. Hard. I think my biggest regret was not going Diddy just to at least get a learning experience from it, from yeah. Diddy perspective. Mm-hmm. So I got half of it done because I learned some stuff with Sephiroth, but like I said, like I can't just pick Sephiroth for like, I can't just pick Sephiroth versus the Lynx or Duck Hunt or Samus and like just win for free. Like I usually have to be prepared with both characters. It's not as yeah. simple as Wolf, because I, I feel like before it was like, I have Wolf, and it's very straightforward on how Wolf counters these characters, right? It's like, okay, I have a reflector, I have a projectile, I can play their game usually better than them, so it doesn't usually take a lot of extensive research. It's like, oh, the bad thing, reflect it, and then I have, you know, a gun. Like, I'm Yeah. Gonna, so so that, that was... Uh, but I thought I handled it well, because like losing early can be super tough, and like the the path is so daunting if you want to do well and blah 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 and like traveling and competing and like it it just can be tough to handle the loss but honestly i thought i handled it well i played one more match and then i was done for the day to get into top 32 against a mewtwo player on stream so that was my first time on stream didn't think i was playing like super insane in any of my matches because i i've been doing this new tech with diddy that i kept trying to do even (laughs) even when it wasn't working and i was like losing stocks games for it but like that's just how i am like if i think i need to do it to win then i'll keep doing it and hopefully i get it down but yeah i was i was like practicing versus first light and like i kept like doing it and messing it up and he would just like super body me for it and he was laughing and saying like oh you should do this versus me like in bracket, <laughs> <laughs> hey, 
Damn, the practice squad is back. You and Light. Yep. Yeah. Cosmos in the in the rotation. The podcast crew. Yeah. He, I think okay. I think I, I got games with him too at one point. I think that was um I think that was Saturday or Friday or Saturday. But yeah, I was done for the day. And I don't know. It was I'm so used to to reacting or at least like in my like feeling like feeling pretty intense about losing and like my thought process going to the next match or day, but I didn't really feel much. And it was like comforting and concerning at the same time. Cause I'm like, am I handling this well? Because I'm like, because of a lack of motivation, is it truly handling it? Well, like I was really questioning myself. Like, like I was kind of scared. I was like, Oh, have I lost like the fire to compete or anything? Like I I'm just always very, at least attempting to be very, understanding of what i'm feeling so i overthink things a lot but i was genuinely concerned for myself but yeah i went into the next day like i i didn't really i warmed up a little bit with larry i you know did my usual routines and i played rocks in top three two and once again i was going for all the popcorn stuff i still couldn't get it down i was like air dodging off stage and like blah 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 but i eventually cleaned it up and won um, and then my next match was the loser of Sonics into Buzz. And I was like, all right, here's a, it's very possible I get knocked out at 17th, even if I play pretty good. Uh, I think, yeah, 17th. But Sonics kind of cleaned the Buzz up uh, game count wise, like a 3 0. So I played the Buzz. I lost the first couple games as D- Diddy versus Rosa, actually. He was Rosa the first two games. I could have won the first game. It was like super close, but he. I think he killed me with like F tilt. It was like just very high percent, very close. Another um, roadblock character as well. Just, you know, in, Luma being in way, real, like yeah. an intercept I think, banana, right? I think Diddy has a lot of ways to win and I have like a lot of game plans for it, but I hadn't really been, been put to the test like that. I haven't really had as much experience versus to buzz Rosa as I have had versus his Olimar uh, as Diddy. Plus you didn't main Diddy in Smash 4. So I feel like there's other Diddy's that are you know that played smash 4 and they might know the matchup a little bit more you know what i mean like the yeah they, they usually don't like, like it the anymore. basics are there they usually don't like it i actually like it more than diddy play i think diddy has the potential to maybe even win the matchup if you're good at it but i did lose those first two games so i was like okay maybe maybe i'm wrong or maybe there's like some more to dive into so i just went sephiroth and it just went really well like i don't think there was any situation from that point onward where I was at like a deficit or anything. The first game was like a two stock and then I like won like a relatively close one. And then I kind of just won the whole time versus his Olimar in game five. I think if he went min min, he probably would have beat me, especially cause he picked FD. So I just, I literally said out loud, like, Oh, like laughing. I'm like, Oh, you're like, is it min min Sephiroth on FD? And he didn't say anything. So I thought maybe he was like tight that I like read him or something, but, but then he, picked, but, but then he picked Olimar and I was like, Oh, okay. So I was just wrong. And then I just or won. Maybe that game. you mind gamed him into making that change. You I know, hope not. Yeah. I truly hope not. Cause I thought it was just an obvious. Cause Min Min kind of buys all uh, Sephiroth, but I know he doesn't play Min Min as much as Rosa and Olimar. His, and yeah, the comfort's his, not there, you know. And Olimar actually doesn't do terrible in my opinion. I, I don't think it's great for him, but I actually think it's much better than you would initially think for how Olimar does versus characters like that usually. But yeah, I, I just kind of cleanly won that one. And I was just surprised. I thought I was over because I was down so much and I wasn't like super locked in, like fighting for my life. I kind of just played it out. So that was cool. And then I played Larry who and I won against his wolf and then he tried me brawler and he actually won a couple games. <laughs> um, it was reverse three OG, right? Yeah. I uh, yeah. The I personally think it probably should have been three or three one, as arrogant as that sounds. But it was like some last hit stuff or like some misinput stuff and then I like died early or something. Like I don't know. I think we were kind of just like vibing and like because we were just laughing and chilling. Like it was like I don't know. I just love that guy. Um, but yeah, I, I did, I did win that one. And then all of a sudden it's like, wow, I've actually made quite a run for myself. And then, um, who was after Larry? Was it Meister? I think. 
I think so. I'm like, oh, I'm one away from top eight after losing 10 years ago. Uh, And then uh, I uh, played Meister, and it was finally not a game five set. I just kind of won. He beat me last time. So that was probably the one I was most ready for in my head. Other than like maybe. Yeah, I would say that was the person I was most prepared for in that venue that like I, I'm familiar with and play with a few times before. I had a bunch of game plans and it was funny because everything just kind of worked. And I feel like last time we played, it was the opposite where like I would land a couple things, but they would barely like not work or, or like not work as intended. And like it was just kind of awkward. But yeah, I made some changes. I also feel like maybe he didn't play like super incredible. I think maybe I... Um, it was a little fortunate that he wasn't like super on point, but yeah, uh, I, it was, it was cool. I got into top eight. So I had another break. I was so exhausted. I was like, holy shit. It's like six o'clock at this point, And like, I've been playing since like what, like nine or like I've been up since like 9am. Like I was pretty tired. I was hoping I could keep it together because my next opponent was riddles. And I'm like, okay, I've beaten him a few times. Like good matchup for my character like i thought i could do it but i feel like all of my most recent losses to riddles are very similar where i just like can't close it out and i feel like a lot of that comes down to like being super comfortable moving with my character and like um a mix of like the defense and confidence and i feel like if it's not fully there then like riddles is gonna like uh break open an opportunity to win so I, 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 I'm not like super like surprised or like upset because I, I feel like it's it's what I would expect between those two characters. Um, like if Diddy holds it together, he has no problem winning. But if you're not perfect, then not even perfect. But if you if you give them too many opportunities, they'll take it. But yeah, I, I think I was just um, not as like didn't have as much energy as I probably needed Um and I, I think Riddles lost pretty early, so I think that's a compliment to him too. I think he was just he was more ready to like clutch out like crazy situations and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah. I was a little disappointed I couldn't go a little farther, but um, I tried to look at it like okay, I was like, you know, it was a, it was a good first time playing since I started dealing with tendonitis and I, I already knew like I'm going to smash factor in like five seconds. So I'm going to have another chance to play and maybe not maybe try to stay in winners a little longer this weekend or something, <laughs> give myself more of a break. But yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Um, I also always have like the second guesses where it's like, Oh, what if I went Sephiroth at one point versus riddles? What if I did blah, blah, blah versus other players? Like, yeah, I wanted to practice a bit more. I didn't really get a chance to, play after getting eliminated but yeah um just getting ready for smash factor sorry if i rambled for like 10 years but oh it's good i think overall shasa sephiroth for being the mvp and keeping me alive in the bracket a few matches longer because i did he hate her bracket it's so weird (laughs) i knew it don't do you not agree? Like reverse three owing a really good player with him and like being able to like use Diddy in other matchups afterwards. Like Yep. That's the only reason that's a big difference between seventeenth and um seventh is what I ended up getting. Sure. So you can you can hate it and you'll have ups and downs sometimes, but I guarantee you if you weren't keeping your Sephiroth sharp, you would not have gotten the same result. If you yeah. like if you were if you were your I cloud era I could have even lost to Pelka. So like if you're in your cloud era still or whatever. You never know. (laughs) I wasn't going to say it, but (laughs) it is what it is. Uh, Shout out to Riddles 2, making top eight in Street Fighter 6 as well. And doing really well. Love watching that kid succeed. He's awesome. Yeah. Um, Shouts to Mena for winning Street Fighter 6. I'm I'm mainly saying this because he talked to me, and I didn't realize he had already won Street Fighter 6, but he talked to me and gave me some advice about tendonitis and, like, recommended some things to me. So cool. that was very nice of you for someone who I who doesn't even know me to do something like that. So shouts to you, congrats, and um, thank you for the advice. But yeah, uh, I guess there's a there's a bunch of stuff from my perspective from Gommel. Like Light had to play Leo for ninth place. That was crazy. Um, Bruh, that's Samba sad. beating Spargo in winners is crazy because I'm just thinking to myself like this kid just won't fucking lose. He's beating everyone. 
Like, it's like natural to him now. Yep. Should I expect him to beat all of us now? Because like statistically, I should. <laughs> he, he only lost to uh, uh, Spargo and Sonics, and that's it. Which is yeah, you know, like, first and second. You know, getting fourth, but still like and, like consistent. Like him and Sonics are like people I think of when I think of consistent right now. Like just off the top of my head, you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, like it's we're just living in a different smash bros ultimate like time like we got spargo we got sonics winning the tournament shout outs to that spargo and sonics have been grinding like all the crazy wi-fi events and like it, it, it it's no coincidence that they get first and second in, in in this case in my opinion made me want to just like just play more and more and more um if i really want to keep up zomba did really well uh Let's see what else was there. Till day, like all the way in winter semis. Winter's, fi- like, winter's finals, yeah. Winter's finals, yes, yes. Sorry, mm-hmm. sorry. I, I, Golly. I didn't keep up as Crazy, well. Right? Once I got eliminated, like I just fell asleep. Like, like I was so tired. But, no energy. Uh, uh, yeah. Try stay doing well is awesome. I think Till day is really cool. Really cool player. Really cool dude. Um, played with him a little bit. Hung out with him a little bit. Got some. I got some good food in toronto too toronto is awesome um uh midnight from socal i believe getting top eight which i don't think anyone expected so bro that, that run was so random but yeah. the crazy thing is i was like thinking because i'm sure a lot of people had this thought like all right this is their miracle run they made top eight it's time for them to get rolled but honestly like the sets they had in top eight were actually pretty competitive so yeah i don't think i think it was like three yeah. three two and three one so yeah Three yeah, two versus it was three, three one loss versus Fargo. So um, and three twoing Meister and three owing Mister R as well on the way there, which yeah. is great because because Raman was playing well that weekend. I saw him on the stream a couple times. Raman was yeah. nervous for Paulo. He's he mm-hmm. he does think Paulo's like one of his worst uh, oh, roles sure. he could have got. He doesn't he doesn't he's not really sure about the matchup. He's not really sure about it as a player and stuff like that. I mm-hmm. talked with him a little bit. I think that's reasonable from from his character perspective and everything. Um, but yeah, uh, I thought Gommel was really great. Shouts to Max and Joe. Um, love y'all for sure. Uh, yeah, I, I thought it was a good, good event. I'm, I'm glad I, I handled like a rough tournament pretty well, honestly. Uh, cause I usually don't to be pretty blunt, but yeah, well, I, I'm still yeah. not sure if that's like a, a good thing or if it's a mixed bag or not but yeah i'm just trying to practice up for smash factor we'll call him a and we'll call him b we were talking uh the day after i think the night of actually and you know it's what i said to you there where it's obviously not the result you want but all things considered and considering names and players who got 33rd at this tournament or whatever 17th or whatever all things considered with you less practice and working on a new injury or, you know, something to play around. I think it was a pretty good tournament for you to come back to. And it's, you know, tough matchups to run into is one thing. And then riddles. It's like, if you're, like you said, if you're not playing perfectly against him, you can just eat shit and die sometimes. Like it just happens. So it was good stuff. Yeah. I, I thought you had a pretty good run. I thought the tournament was great. Sonic's like yet again, doing well in a matchup that his character has no business doing well in against Spargo. Like before it was, it was uh, light at Momocon where he beat him and made that matchup look actually pretty good for Sonic, which is ridiculous because I don't know how he does that. But then he did the same thing against Spargo's Aegis. So I don't know how he keeps doing it, but he's looking more and more unstoppable as every tournament goes on. Something I chatted about a little bit with B and whatnot, and something I really appreciate about like Sonic's and a couple other players, like like first off, like Sonic's is such like a – like a warrior and a champion, like barely can't win a tournament or wins a tournament, comes to the next one, fights just as hard, blah, blah, blah. Like it is so tough to put yourself out there. Like, like even look at Spargo, like tough, tough run at crown comes back, almost wins this tournament. Like think of all these players that have been competing for so long that just like keep running it back win or lose. Like it's impressive to keep coming back. Like whether you get first place or whether you get whatever, like ninth place or for these top players. Um, and I don't know. I just think that there's something so beautiful about that because I always, um, I told this to be uh, last night. I said like my least favorite moment at a tournament 
is like, let's use this one as an example. Like I get eliminated at seven. So there's a decent chunk of the event left. And I say, it's like, it's like the most lonely feeling that weekend for me, because like, like a lot of the people, like my peers are like also top players are still competing or something or like, or like Max is running the tournament or like y'all are commentating. So it's like, you kind of have to deal with just your own being alone for like just a few hours, but it's like the most lonely few hours of your life, especially because you have to watch everyone else continue to compete and it just sucks. So like, I'm just thinking that I'm sure like some of these other top players have felt this before. And it is very inspiring that they keep, they keep traveling, they keep running it back. They travel across the world just for another chance to win, blah, blah, blah. And like, I just want to mention that like that shit yeah. fucking sucks. <laughs> like imagine being the dude that is almost as good as these top players that just yeah. helps them warm up <laughs> and then they go play and then they come back to you like, oh, okay, you want to warm up? And you're just sitting there like, okay, like <laughs> sure. I'm your practice partner, but then bracket starts and, you're in top eight and I got 25th. It's lit. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, I <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely understand. Yeah, it's like, and when, and when I when I ignore all those fe- thoughts and feelings, it's like, all right, let me go play. And then you walk in and the setups are gone. It's like, I truly have to deal with myself right now. God damn it. Like, I don't know, man. <laughs> The world said, deal with it. It'd be There's like no that. escape. <laughs> Dude, and you said something, Kevin, about players coming from all over the world to play. And again, I think we talk about this every week. We make it. I was going to say we make it a thing, but Ultimate itself makes it a thing. But shout outs to Zosef and Rox, who are two players where it was an incredible run-in in Bracket, where I forget where it was in Bracket, top not top 32, top 128 maybe. Yeah. But Rox, Rox is a player who never left Mexico and was doing well in winter side of Bracket, the Sheik that you played. And then uh, Zosef is from Saudi Arabia, their top player. So it was Roy versus Sheik. And I was like, who are these players? And I saw the flags. I was like, wait, this is so cool. Like, these are two yeah. players who I've never heard of, you know, from, well, Mexico is not quite as underrepresented as it used to be. But but Saudi Arabia, obviously, we haven't heard a whole lot from over there. So it's really cool, man, to see Ultimate continue to, to grow and expand and to see uh, Gom will be home to so many players from so many different uh, countries. So, yeah, I don't know. I, th- I thought that was dope. It wasn't like... It was a good set too. Like it was a fun set to watch. It wasn't like set of the tournament or anything, but I thought it was super sick to watch those two that players. Really so cool. shout, shout out to them, man. Make it that far in winners and have to play each other. And something that's funny is like, it's not like I want my peers to like lose so they can like join me in being a loser or something when I'm eliminated. <laughs> but it's like at the same time, it's like, like you kind of have that feeling because you. Like, for example, if it's, like, light, it's, like, oh, like, he can relate to me. So, like, I if if I only have to wait 30 minutes and then I can hang out with, with my boy and, like, we can be mad at the game together, like, that's what, like, <laughs> I, I can't just do that with anyone, right? Like, because there's only so many, right. like, super major tournament level players out there. Like, uh, so, like, only if so many people can, like, have actually had those experiences. So, it's, like, it's not like I want them to fail or anything, but it's, like, oh, Leo's out. Like, it's, like, oh, I, maybe I can say hi to him because <laughs> I'm fucking bored right now. Like, holy shit. Fallen I brethren. Need, I, need this, battle. I need this tournament to, to end so I can forget that I'm a loser. But, like, uh, yeah, it, it's just – it's just it's funny because you want them – you want your best friends to win, but you also are, like, damn, like – I need someone to hang out with. Like, hurry up and lose or something. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> we can go get some food or something, right? I ho- yeah, I hope that makes sense. Yeah, bro, I'm hungry. I gotta wait three more hours. Like, come uh, on. dude, I mean, as like, dude, as commentators, as commentators too, I know you feel that. Yeah, yeah. Well, especially because most commentators are social people just by nature. So it's like we all want to get out. We we always make these big plans as commentators. Like, let's go hang out. Let's all do this stuff, and it never fucking happens. A just because we're so busy, we get caught up doing our own thing, kind of. And then B, it's like we're all working. We're all, you know, commentary blocks at, take up two hours. Then when you're done, two more people you probably wanted to hang out with have to jump in, too. So it's it's always tough um, to try Usually to Usually whoever it. you just did your block with is probably the person you're going to go out and get some food with or something. Because totally. you guys are on, like, the same alternating, yeah. like, oh, on for yeah. two hours, off for two hours, on for two hours, stuff like that. I think it's cool, though. It, sometimes it makes it kind of dynamic. Like, you end up hanging out with someone or, like, doing something you didn't expect just because you have no choice. Right, <laughs> like, right. Like, oh, let's get food because we're working together or something. Like, mm-hmm. you have there no you go. Not much of a choice. 
Yeah, and I love the narrative coming out from Gamo as well because I feel like Spargo has been very dominant. And I honestly feel like of all the top players right now, when Spargo goes to a tournament, I feel like Sonic's has the best chance of beating him. I, I don't know if that's like, you know, via record wise, if all the numbers match up. But it, it, when I think of just yeah the last couple times that Spargo and Sonic's has faced off, Sonic's has done very well versus Spargo. And yeah. I also think that of all the top players, I mean, Sonic's character is also very broken at this, so he abuses it, obviously. <laughs> but like, he's so strong off stage, and I feel like if you want yeah. to be able to beat Spargo, you cannot. Like, you can go for these some of these safe two frames and stuff like that, but those kinds of strategies are just not as consistent as like it was versus pre patch cloud, right? Pre patch cloud, there was your your window to two frame was a lot bigger, right? So it, it feels like players have to go out and take a little bit more risks. Obviously, Sonic as a character can make tons of risks and not get reversaled in so many situations off stage because he has like a downward projectile, which is like well, that's insanely great tool to have for anyone going low. You can just hit him out of their double jump, like cloud right. And then on top of that, that downward projectile also positions him higher vertically so he can fake to cover low and then actually cover high, right? We, we've seen Sonics make so many matchups doable because of this. You know, Fox being one of them, right? Obviously, Fox is always exploitable off stage, but, you know, how strong Fox is on stage against Sonic can be so overwhelming, but he turns it around with the edge guarding. And I think the same goes for against Spargo, against the Aegis, right? He just really makes it count off stage. And that works. That strategy works on both of Spargo's characters. If you can edge guard both of Spargo's characters, it's going to be pretty rough for Spargo. So uh, it, it, it's a, we, we have very interesting and dynamic triangles going on where Light is the strongest player against Sonics, right? So as long as Sonics doesn't have to go up against Light, I think Sonics only has one set on Light, but the one time he did take a set, Light won that tournament over him, so it yeah. kind of well, well, counts, well, well, but kind of yeah. not really, right? So I, I feel like a bunch of players are trying to avoid specific, like only maybe one or two specific players, and then they kind of have an evenest matchup against all the other ones. It's a, it's a very interesting timeline right now if you're trying to predict brackets because brackets just seem so unpredictable. Dude. And even when you look at Gommel's top eight, you could have flipped losers and winners and it would have made more sense. Yep. But then I was like, oh, wow, like these players are in winner's side and these are the players in loser side. It was like, it just felt like there was a lot of uh, upsets and head turns and all that. Yeah, that yeah. is the power of staying through winners the whole way, right? Because um, you only needed to, he, at the end of the day, Sonic's only had to take one set off of Spargo. You know what I mean? Like that was it. Like he was already injured or however you want, you know what I mean? Like he had yeah. already used already lost his life. lives up. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, you know, shout out to Sonic's. I think beyond one of the most consistent players we have, especially at beating players, he's seated higher than, you know what I mean? Like I can't remember the last time he ate a big upset. I can't even remember when that happened or who that even was. Um, but he's been so good recently. Probably like at the start of this year, probably. <laughs> the start to of like, Ultimate is what I thought you were like, going to say. To like Big Boss in January. Oh, uh, yeah. Or maybe at Collision. Yeah. Like some, like, mm -hmm. but it's, it's, yeah. he's very consistent. Back on the edge guarding thing, I just think he has such a in depth, consistent flow chart wow. to it. Mm -hmm. It's gotten yeah. so much better. I think and there's always what, like why he won. He has like the occasional cash out edge guard too, where he gets an even earlier kill or like he, he it's, it's very in depth. It, it, it has it all for sure. Yeah. Um, it's like salt. It's like in a, like when I see him, absolutely. it's kind of like when it's like when light hits a neutral air and you see him dash forward and you see them go like DI out. You're like, all right, he's dead. Like it's over. Like you don't have to watch the rest of the screen. Yeah, or like when you hit a banana confirm or whatever, it's like, all right, that's happening. With Sonics, I feel that way about his edge guarding. I'm like, I don't even have to look. He took away Sparkle's jump. He's off stage. He's ages. He has to side B. He's dead. It's a layup. It's his back air all day. Like, it's yeah. just going to happen. It's just, I don't know how he's gotten so good at it. The first couple times I saw it, I was like, wow, that's incredible. Now it's like, yep, just another day at the office, right? Just yeah. Another day. And if I compare it to another big edge guarder Ultimate has seen in like ESAM. Yeah. Like, um. Like Esams is a bit like um, like relentless and just like throwing as much of it as you as he can at you, right? And it's like if any of this hits, I can win. But with Sonics, it's like different um, in the sense of it's not like there's no sense of um, desperation or like I'm throwing a million things at you and like I hope some of it hits. Where it's like it's just very in depth, deliberate, consistent. And this isn't even like an insult or anything. I'm just like comparing like two like edge guarders throughout ultimate's history and i think to 
super clarify on it like sonics also has like the balance between that and ledge trapping and like two frame attempts like it feels like he really gauges everything really well um but yeah that, that's just like something i think of like and like once to talk about the cash outs too like the if he homing attacks you and then if he catches your jump and you're dead and like like there's like it's not just like you die at high percent like he could kill you at like 30 percent. yeah like zombo he, and zombo got double back air and I he was wants like, to catch Whoa. out like and he thinks it's the right time for it it's it's he's he really has a nice um like read and flow for the situation so it's scary like i i'm glad um I've played Sonics online as much as I have because I've gotten hit by all of the stuff that you can get hit by. And it feels like I'm at least a little bit more ready, (laughs) but even then, like it's so strong that it's not even like it's about like getting tricked or gimmicked. Like some of it is just that good. Like it's just option coverage. So yeah, it's, it's very, very good. I mean, you, you prophesized this Gavin. I remember, you know, year one, year two of Ultimate, everyone was talking about how bad Sonic is oh. as a character, right? And <laughs> I mean, you you were one of the first people that always, like, just had Sonic at, at bare minimum top 15, top 10, and you would always tell people, like, you know, the game's just not as pushed yet and stuff like that. And you, you see players like Sonic's really pushing this character to the absolute limit on both offense and defense. There's a lot of credit to be said there. Because even, I like your comparison with Isam because... I would say, you know, the first couple of years of Ultimate, I would give it give it to Esam in terms of the like, the best edge guarding player, right? Yeah. And obviously, Pikachu was a lot stronger ba- back then. I, I I think all of us can kind of agree that Pikachu has fallen off, right? Um, and you know, some people might still put Pikachu in their top five, but in terms of tournament results, Pikachu has definitely fallen off, right? Compared to you know the earlier days of Ultimate, and Esam was just super front loaded on the offense, and that's how his edge guarding was too. But it feels like Sonic. Like you kind of pointed out, there's a, there's a little bit more mix of defense or like transitioning from different phases to the edge guarding back to the ledge trapping. Or Sonics has even disgusting setups where he'll get you to feel like, oh, I should swing by the ledge to defend myself. And he'll end up back on stage charging a forward smash angle down and getting your stock even earlier, right? Like there there's so much more layers to it. And I don't know if that's just, I mean, it's probably a combination of the things, right? Like maybe Sonic the character having more options and just the game and the player base getting so much better at the game. Yeah, for sure. I, and it's always insane. Cause I feel like the most glaring thing about Sonics, when you would compare Sonics to other players of uh, that play Sonic is his offense was so much better. Yeah. And there's a lot more going on there and like creativity and you might see something you haven't seen before. But the true scary thing is that he has that and his defense is better than theirs too. So it's like, oh, so we're talking about like a potential like unbeatable threat. (laughs) Uh, So that's the scariest thing for sure Um, is that the damage output is so much higher. And then also like if you give him that damage, you're not going to be able to win the game. (laughs) Whether he takes your sock or he doesn't let you hit him once, you know what I mean? So uh, that's the scariest part is – his ability to turn those light switches on and off at any given moment for whatever pacing he thinks is, is best. Whenever I watch Sonics, it's really funny. I was telling this to people um, that I was talking to, like in a group chat, a bunch of smashers. I was like, bro, when I watch Sonics play a matchup and I watch any other Sonic in the world play the same matchup, I get two vastly different like opinions on how the matchup goes. Like, I'll, I'll watch Sonic's play versus, like, Aegis, and I'm like, this is even... Maybe, maybe Sonic wins. Like, I yeah. like in my head, I'm like, maybe yeah. Sonic even wins this. But if I watch any other Sonic play against Aegis or Fox or anything like that... Getting like smoked. R- like, it's Roy, a like, bag, yeah. Uh, like, the way that he... I can't tell if it's... And that's how you, like, know it's the sign of a very good player. I cannot tell if that is truly Sonic yeah. or if that's Sonic's. Like, I can't tell. I'm like is Sonic's like that much better than every other Sonic or is Sonic just that good? And he's just bringing that out of the character. I I truly cannot tell. I was saying the same thing about white this weekend, actually, like after a while I was watching him play Leo and I was like, dude, how good is Fox? Like for real? Like how, (laughs) and sometimes like parrot, like that was the thing is I can't even think of who, 
like in terms of Sonic players and Fox players, like who is the the definitive number two? You know what I mean? Like who kind of, because I mean, Ken's had up and downs of Sonic, right? I mean, there's Wrath obviously is also very good, but I don't think he plays quite as much anymore. And same with Fox. Like there's really only two char- two pe- two players who are really putting these characters at the top tippity top of the tier list it, or at least it seems that way but i had it's funny you said that about sonics because i had the same thought about fox this weekend watching um paris play against leo and i was like why don't more people play fox i'm like oh because it's fucking hard because he don't cut to charles right now by the way because sometimes <laughs> even though even though he is light and even though he is so good with fox sometimes he just dies at 20 like sometimes he just topples off the stage and he is jump gets red and he's dead and that's it yeah. it doesn't happen often because he's really really good mm, at that yeah. particular part of the game but when it does yeah. happen it's like he's immortal, you know. He is a mortal, not immortal. He is a mortal. Like he just dies. He any other fox at that point, he's he's just the same thing. And that's how Sonic's made Sparkle look. Same thing when he took his jump off stage with Aegis. Up, oh, you're just another okay. Aegis. I don't care. It doesn't matter. Yeah. You're number one in the world. It doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> you go out here. Right? I got you. Mm-hmm. When you're it's in crazy see. and like your your skills are taken away from you because you have no double jump or something. And your skills like... have been robbed from you. <laughs> like, oh. It doesn't matter who you are. That's a very, I like the way you put that quite a bit. Um, Cause like I was a smash four cloud player, but like I felt so powerful, but like all of a sudden, like before, like at a moment's notice, you're like, oh, I'm bad. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm a bad player. Yeah. I'm just another pocket cloud. Oh. No. Yeah. <laughs> There's, there is yeah. something to this game where it really it, the and the more i thought about it and look at this top eight bracket similar to what charles said it seemed like the bracket was almost upside down I'm like this game is so fucking hard because we've been having so much fun with street fighter and like this you know this game that's kind of new and kind of fresh like kind of brand new game on the scene and like all these question marks around who's gonna win like there are all these veteran players like all this stuff and ultimate it's like bro who's gonna get picked off who's even gonna get top eight this game's been around for six seven years like what's the deal like how have we not found a super consistent top eight? And the answer is that the game is so hard, man. It's so hard. And a part of it is, and I swear soccer, I knew this. I don't know if he knew the extent that he knew this, but it's like, try to master every matchup, like good luck, basically. And it's like, seriously though, like how the fuck, like that is almost, and you ran into that, Gavin, you ran into almost every single bad matchup for one of your, for Diddy, for your main, for your true main. So it's yeah. like, how do you overcome? And then you still ran into Riddles, who, like you said, you do well against, but he still beat you. Like, it, shit could just happen. The game is insane. I don't know what to say about it. And these guys who are so consistent, I don't know how they do it. Like, this is a bracket where Leo and Meister and Big D, they didn't make top eight. They're, and they're incredible. Like, all three of them are incredible players. It's yeah. somehow, I think, like, this break and, like, this kind of different i don't want to call it like a time warp or anything but this different i don't know something changed as, as to what's happened at least maybe my perspective as a viewer or something but maybe it's watching more street fighter or more other games or something like that because they're they're newer and they're fresher but i'm like damn ultimate seems fucking impossible to be really good and really consistent at all the time like the more i watch usually a game like as it gets more solved you're like oh okay like this happens that happens that's the end you know no that's not what happens in ultimate ever like there's a yeah. timeline where sonics didn't get top eight this tournament we're obviously not living on a timeline. That's a very rare timeline, but it can happen. <laughs> Tilde winners finals. We all think Tilde is a great player. We're all Tilde fans, obviously. Did any of us have that in our bingo cards? Probably not. And that's not because he's not amazing, not because he's not brilliant. Part of it is he plays Falco, obviously. So who knows very how that's going to go on, on any given day. But then it's also the Tilde factor where, yeah, he could just blow anyone up at zero at any stock because he's Tilde. So the shit's crazy, yeah. man. It really I think is. Some of that can kind of relate to what I was saying about my feelings with like handling the losses and like, you know, just like not really sure with myself. I think some of like the whole changes with ultimate can be a part of that in some way. Like you were saying, like, like at some points I was just sitting in that venue, kind of like just looking around and like waiting for my next match. And it's like, I don't know. I had a bit of a weird moment, like where it's like, I've been playing this for so long. And like, sometimes I feel like maybe like, I'm not sure what's going on. Like, what am I doing here? Blah, blah, blah. And like, I couldn't really figure out if like, I, I, I'm not even saying these feelings were positive or negative. Like they were purely like observational, like where I was like, really like, and like truly like the game has changed in a lot of ways. Like the, like, like the game is just changing all the time. So you really have to figure your own emotions with the game and like how you feel about everything all the time. Cause it's, it's always different every five seconds. So 
but yeah, that, that, that's always a weird thing that can happen. And I, I think some of it could be just, I've been doing this so long that weird sh- feelings appear and happen. But even when I'm like playing and like the crowds, like saying certain things or like the crowds getting hype and it's like, I'm just thinking it's like, like, I don't really feel anything. Like I've just, been, I'm like, I've been doing this so long. Like, this isn't as exciting to me as it is to y'all <laughs> like uh, and, and like coming to terms with that and like figuring out like what to do with that moving forward is it's something I, I can enjoy and stuff, but like, it, it's just, the game is just ever changing, ever changing. Like, Oh, that's easy to help you with. Oh, we got some, some pink advice. Well, no, I'm not going to do it live, but. Oh, okay. Oh, this, this you gotta yeah. subscribe to the yeah. bonus content to hear. Don't funny, subscribe to that and expect that because it's, not it's funny because I sound like this old wise man on top of a mountain, but it's like for like video game tournaments. But like, <laughs> it is truly like I'm not even like sugarcoating it or anything. Like it, it's just feelings I feel some tournaments, and like to me, it's it, it is like mostly interesting and observational. Like I'm not even like. Like I've been in much worse places mentally throughout. You're my not. Life. You're not would, trying to doom a post or anything like that. I don't yeah, know. I'm really not even dooming right now. But I was, it, it, I was gonna say, given like, because there are times where even though like not an injury or anything, but like you haven't been playing as much, then you go and you get frustrated because you don't get the result you want. Like that's an outcome that happens, which is really understandable. I'm sure a lot of people have done that themselves. Yeah. And for this one, I was hoping that you know my thought was, I just hope you have a good perspective coming out because. I mean, winning a tournament when you're not practicing as much because you're injured and then trying to learn how to work through an injury while or, or how to manage your injury or manage, you know, your tendonitis while you're playing. This is your first tournament doing it. So I'd hope that you just had a good perspective coming out of it. And even if you bombed, like even if you did terribly, it's like, well, shit, there's silver lining is there's plenty to work on. That's cool. Like, all right, yeah. at least I know what I got to work on. But if you do well, it's like, all right, cool. That was a good first step. But how do I you know, keep going from here? So I think to me, it was more obviously the physical thing matters, uh, but the mental is what I cared about more for you going into this tournament, because I was worried that like you might miss some tech and then be like, damn, my hands, I haven't been practicing. Then you get in your own head about it. But it sounds like you did the opposite where you got more stubborn. You're like, no, I could do it. And you just fuck it up again off stage. It's like, all right, well, <laughs> yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't stop doing it. Like yeah. it was kind of funny. Like, I, just, I just kept doing it and just losing games and stocks i just did not care <laughs> gavin's stubbornness can lead to like something crazy and yeah. like majestic or beautiful like him just playing like <laughs> crazy well and winning a tournament or it could be like the worst thing ever and he just like bombs you know what i mean i feel like there's two sides <laughs> yep. of the coin there but I- i'm always glad that you stick with what you believe in no matter what right like throughout yeah, in my head training. it's like i'm practicing it for a reason and i think i needed to win so i just mm-hmm. i just do it yeah, I think we can talk about maybe Smash Factor a little bit. Hey, we got a couple upcoming tournaments we're all really excited about. Smash Factor, and then further down the road, Watch the Throne. You're excited for Watch the Throne, though, right, Gavin? Absolutely. There you go. W. We're probably doing a live tweet talks there, so get ready. Yeah. Yeah, if you guys probably. have any suggestions, if you guys are watching, we're oh, yeah. probably thinking about doing like a joined episode of like Lights Out and Tweak Talks. I think that could be really fun. I'm also worried about like maybe that's too much people talking at the same time. I'm not too sure. Uh, there's another idea where we could mix the members like two from each and yeah. kind of interweave them, right? And make sure for sure, for sure we get E and Tweak on the same episode together. So oh, Tweaks boy. out and Light Talks. Yeah, we got to get E yeah. <laughs> yeah. are, are a team for sure. A thousand percent. <laughs> I know yeah. he's dying for that. Only so. only one of you would enjoy that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I know he I just wants so. to mess with me. We did like this thing, this mm-hmm. like interview thing. This is like a maybe spoilers for like some content that's I don't even know where it's gonna come out in the future with like luminosity. But um, Phil was like interviewing me and like doing it was like fast questions like oh you got to answer them quick like sixty second like I was super slow by the way I'm so sorry. But um, at one point, he's like, most embarrassing smash moment. And I was like, I've never thought of anything as, like, embarrassing. And I was like, oh, like, I've been, like, JV3'd in Smash, like, four. Have you really? Yeah, and, like, friendlies. I'm not oh. saying anything else. Um, <laughs> it was, it was me, chat. It was me, chat. Oh, um, my God. And then Phil just immediately was like, oh, I thought you were going to say Evo. And just, like, moved on. And I'm just like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <What> Golly. <the fuck? laughs> 
<laughs> what the fuck? Like he just loves to mess with me. Like it wasn't so embarrassing. Funny. That was just like, oh shit. Dude, what? That's what oh, I was man. thinking. I was like, oh, that just like sucked. But like, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. yeah. Embarrassing is not the right word for that. Yeah, th- there's a lot of words for it, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Such a, he's yeah. such a clown he's such a clown bro he he's is. the best i like having him around though i don't know if i've said this on the show though of course and i can't give him too much credit to his face but like i genuinely think he does it to like mellow me out when i'm stressed out about competing because i genuinely think he cares because he always wants to see me do well and i genuinely think that's his way of like keeping me chill and like just loose and like ready to play by like joking around, messing with me. Like I genuinely think that is part of his strategy and it, I do think it's helpful for sure. Yeah. Yeah. He, he or maybe I'm just coping with him bullying me or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It feels great. He's just, yeah, you're, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got it, Gavin. That's the right perspective. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he tells us all the time. Right, well, the guys? positive mentality. <laughs> right, guys. And I guess we, we do get into the Patreon content. Thank you, everyone, for watching. We're going to be talking about a lot of data and statistics with um, relevant yeah, characters and stuff. So be sure Char- to watch that. Character selection, character success. So it's yeah. really cool. It's a video by our guy, my guy for sure, uh, Easy Freeze. So yeah, Easy Freezy. Um, so that'll be great. Hell See yeah, you. Hell yeah.